Hi, I'm Dr. Wong at Southeast Veterinary Neurology. Today we're going to be diving into atlantoaxial luxation, also called AA luxation, a condition we most commonly see in young, toy breed dogs. AA luxation is a problem that happens in the neck, specifically between the first two bones of the neck. These bones, called the atlas and axis, work together to allow your dog to move its head up and down and side to side. But in certain breeds, the connection between these two bones isn't always as strong as it should be, leading to instability, and in some cases, dislocation, also called subluxation. If the atlas and axis fall out of alignment, they may press on the spinal cord, causing neck pain or other neurological symptoms. The earliest and most common sign of atlantoaxial luxation is neck pain. You might notice your dog holding the head low or having it tilted to the side. They might be reluctant to move the head. They might yelp or cry when they're picked up or when they're touched around the neck. Sometimes they cry spontaneously. Sometimes they walk very carefully. And some dogs are reluctant to eat or drink from bowls on their floor. In more serious cases, dogs can experience neurological symptoms, becoming wobbly, weak, or even unable to walk, stand, or move their legs. In rare cases, some dogs may even struggle to breathe if the spinal cord is severely compressed. Most dogs with this condition start showing symptoms before one year of age, but in some cases, signs can appear later in life. So how does this happen? In some cases, an accident like a fall can trigger atlantoaxial luxation. But in certain breeds, the real issue actually begins before birth. Most of the bones of the spine are connected by intervertebral discs. However, there's no intervertebral disc between the atlas and the axis. They're connected by ligaments, many of which attach to a small piece of bone called the dens. This allows a greater range of motion at the atlantoaxial joint. Some dogs are born with abnormalities in this area. For example, the ligaments or dens can be misshapen, weak, or missing. Because of this underlying instability, even normal activities like jumping off the couch or playing with a toy can lead to sudden luxation. While AA luxation can occur in bigger dogs and even cats, it's far more common in small and toy breed dogs, including the Chihuahua, Maltese, Yorkies, Toy Poodles, and Pomeranians. If we suspect atlantoaxial luxation based on your dog's breed, age, and symptoms, sometimes we'll start with x-rays to check for misalignments of the neck bones. However, x-rays don't show us everything, especially when it comes to how much pressure is on the spinal cord. That's why we often recommend MRI as it gives us a detailed view of the spinal cord, helping us create the best treatment plan. In many cases, CAT scans are also used in order to help plan for surgery. It's important to keep in mind that many of the breeds prone to AA luxation may also have other conditions that commonly affect small and toy breeds. There are two main treatment options for atlantoaxial luxation. The first is surgery. The best way to give your dog long-term relief is through surgery. In surgery, we realign and then stabilize the bones. In doing this, we not only relieve the pressure on the spinal cord, but we also prevent future injury. It's a delicate procedure, but with experienced hands, it has a very high success rate. After surgery, dogs are typically placed in a body splint and crate rested for at least eight weeks. For dogs that aren't candidates for surgery, a body splint pain medication, and crate rest for at least 12 weeks may help the symptoms. About half of dogs that we treat in this way will show some improvement. However, this non-surgical approach does not address the instability, so the likelihood of re-injury is much higher in these patients. Most dogs that are treated with this approach will either recur or worsen within a year. The good news is that with surgery, most dogs can go on to live full, active lives without recurring problems. 
At Southeast Veterinary Neurology, surgery has a greater than 90% long-term success rate. If surgery isn't an option, we can discuss how to manage atlanoaxial luxation conservatively and keep your pet as comfortable as possible. If your small or toy breed dog is showing any signs of neck pain, please don't wait to seek care. Atlantoaxial luxation can sound really scary, but with the right care, most dogs can still enjoy happy, pain-free lives. And Southeast Veterinary Neurology is here to help you every step of the way. Thanks for watching.